So this is the final um, tape recorder, uh, tape player circuit that I have uh, made. So I have here the cassette deck mechanism, uh, which is basically run off of a five volt DC motor. Um, and that powers the entire mechanism for all the different things, the rewind, the fast forward. Um, and here's a summary of the circuit. Um, so for the tape player, it's just one thing. It's the preamp, this little single op amp. Um, and what is going on here is that the, the tape head right here runs these wires through all the way here. And then I put shielding on the wire, which is just basically wrapping it in tin foil and uh, grounding the tin foil part. So it doesn't make any, it doesn't make any uh, crazy um, noise. But you can hear here the noise in this part that's not shielded. You can sort of hear it in the background if I'm quiet. So, but if I touch over here, I don't have that problem. So that's how the shielding works. So that's the tape preamp, single op amp, based on a circuit that I talked about in the videos. Um, I have here a switch uh, for the source for the recording circuit. And so the recording circuit consists of uh, three parts, basically. Well, four if you count this Bluetooth. So this Bluetooth receiver that I have connected to an iPad. And that Bluetooth receiver receives a signal and that signal gets amplified by the recording preamplifier. Uh, in order to monitor the levels of the recording preamplifier, I have it uh, going through this uh, basic uh, quick and dirty VU meter that is based on an LM3915 or a, um, uh, that looks at the uh, values and, and has eight different comparators. Um, these are CLO74s, so four op amps in each, so a total of eight op amps, and it gives you 10, or it gives you eight levels of uh, voltage measurement. And um, this preamplifies the signal, sends a portion of the signal, which is buffered out to this uh, uh, VU meter, the remainder of the signal goes out through this uh, switch next to the preamp, and that gets connected to this uh, quarter inch jack, which is what I have running to a speaker so I can actually hear the sound that I'm recording. The volume here, this potentiometer, adjusts for the uh, level of uh, uh, volume. It's a 100K potentiometer, and uh, it adjusts for how much of the signal uh, from the Bluetooth uh, comes in. The last part of this for recording is the AC bias uh, oscillator. And that uh, basically is a, another video. Um, it uses the um, erase head of the cassette deck as, which is that right there, um, as a um, inductor and uh, alongside a uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor, uh, this produces an AC bias uh, signal, which gets superimposed upon the uh, audio input signal. And as a result, you get um, an output, which uh, is controlled by these uh, switches, whether to play or record, and uh, basically it just turns things on and off um, and uh, adjusts what part of um, whether the uh, playhead, this uh, tape head, is um, recording or um, playing. So uh, here's uh, a song that I recorded on the player before, and let's hear what it sounds like. And I have various testing of the different volumes in order to adjust for the, the correct bias. And so here it goes. Let's hear what it sounds like. And it 
Sounds pretty good. Um, sounds pretty good. Good quality signal. There's almost no noise on, uh, on this amplifier. Um, and, uh, and that's it. The AC bias oscillator also has an adjustment uh, potentiometer here, which uh, adjusts how much of the AC bias goes in. Uh, and I regulate it to about uh, nine to 10 volts of AC bias um, signal coming in. Um, the AC bias signal uh, operates at uh, 91 kilohertz, uh, 92 kilohertz, and approximately 70 volts. Um, uh, a lot of that signal uh, gets taken out by this uh, 6 uh, 0.8 nanofarad capacitor and this inductor right next to it as set up as a bias trap um, which takes out the majority of the bias for the actual record head otherwise you don't hear any of the sound signal coming through too much bias is, is almost as bad as no bias at all uh, in terms of distortion and not recording so now to test out the recording circuit um, I now have pressed these two buttons in um, and the source uh, in and now um, I'm gonna I have a, a oscilloscope probe attached to what's going on into the playhead or to the record head at the moment the AC bias oscillator is off and so if I turn it on here um, you should see the bias Oop bias signal right and that's the AC bias signal if I uh, adjust it appropriately it's a nice sine wave it's about 8.5 volts you can adjust it with this uh, little potentiometer knob um, but I have it set to a good level right now um, so I'm not gonna do that but but you can see 90 kilohertz stable as she goes sine wave. And now I have this iPad that's connected to the Bluetooth input here. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just play the iPad, play the music from the iPad and you should be able to hear it because I have it feeding through into this audio source. And you can see the VU meter registering it. Let me turn this down. I'm going to turn that down. And you can see the signal that the AC oscillator does. So you can see the waveform bouncing according to the, the actual audio signal. And these, these peaks and these valleys sort of um, get this to record within the linear region of the tape. And so that's how that works. And if I record this now, it's gonna be a nice volume. Um, if I, re I have this view meter here, the reason for that is because sometimes if you go too high, it just distorts. So I'm gonna, you want it to peak at like the fifth or sixth one. I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit. That's better. And that should be a distortion-free recording uh, for this. And so I just basically have to record now. If, uh, if I had enough hands, I would do it. So in order not to get copyrighted, I'm gonna turn this volume down all the way. Oh, it's still registering. Let me just switch off the source here. That makes it better. And I'll turn the speaker off. And uh, there we go. Um, so that's our uh, input signal uh, and what it looks like on the oscilloscope. And um, if I turn the AC bias oscillator off, let me turn it off. And you just have the waveform coming from, this is what the waveform looks like naturally. coming from the audio source. So when I turn the AC bias on, you see the exact same waveform 
but you see it at the peaks and valleys of the the bias oscillator. So, anyways, um, and that's how the recording part of the circuit works. Let me stop it, and if I stop the music, um, you'll see the waveform start bouncing. There it goes, flat. And that's a signal that has um, no audio input. And that's going to be uh, empty going to the uh, cassette. So, anyway, that's the AC bias oscillator, and that's how that works. So this is the complete schematic of the entire tape recorder and tape player circuit, including the VU meter. It's basically putting everything together. Um, and I'm going to explain the different parts of it in a second. The first part is the recording preamplifier. It has a uh, Bluetooth audio input, and it has an option for an auxiliary uh, jack audio input. input. signal goes through a 100K potentiometer wired as a voltage divider. Uh, that goes through a 10 microfarad capacitor into the non-inverting input of an op amp, uh, the gain of which is about 20, um, and this is biased at 6 volts. The output of the recording preamplifier goes through uh, a set of three voltage buffers, uh, three additional op amps. The top one goes through a um, centering or a, a biasing circuit and then a peak detector, and that goes to the VU meter. Um, this middle one goes through a 10 microfarad capacitor and gets output to an amplifier so you can hear the signal, um, the audio signal that you want to record. And the third one at the bottom uh, gets mixed in through a separate 10K resistor passively with the AC bias signal in order to record. And that ends up going to the playhead or to the record head. The AC bias oscillator which I described in detail in a previous video, is basically a sine wave generator um, that uses the erase head as an inductor and a 10 nanofarad capacitor. And this LC tank circuit basically gets amplified through a push-pull uh, transistor set, um, and that gets output through a 330 picofarad capacitor uh, and then through a potentiometer in order to adjust the amount of AC bias mixed in with the audio signal. The output of the AC bias oscillator gets passively mixed in with the audio input signal. Prior to this, a bias trap is set up using a 10 nanofarad capacitor and a 330 microhenry inductor. And this is tuned to approximately the same resonant frequency as the AC bias oscillator in order to trap some of the bias and protect the record head from getting too much of the AC bias signal. Otherwise, you won't hear any of the audio signal because the voltage on the AC bias signal is so high. The tape player preamplifier is, uh, was discussed previously in another video. And this basically has an adjustable gain, which is fairly large since the voltage output of the tape player is so low. That gets put out through a 100 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor and output to the amplifier. And finally, we have the VU meter, which was described in detail in a previous video. But basically, uh, this is a set of eight op amps set up as comparators um, with LEDs in order to indicate as each comparator lights up based on the amount of input voltage that's going in. Um, I only set this up for the record circuit, but technically it can be set up for the play circuit as well if you want a VU meter on the play circuit. That's our tape player, tape recorder circuit. Um, DIY analog at its best using tape. As always, thank you guys for watching and subscribing if you did. On to the next project. If you guys have any ideas of stuff for me to build, let me know.